shifted once again for a decisive game five. The winner tonight moves on and has a date with the Houston Astros for the American League pennant. FS1 is proud to present game five of the American League Division Series between the New York Yankees and the defending AL champion Cleveland Indians. Welcome inside Matt Vaskersian. 15 teams in a best of five postseason series have come back from an 0 2 deficit to force a decisive game five. Yankees, if you want some positive historical context, nine of those 15 teams have gone on to win the series. For the 102 win Cleveland Indians, they haven't lost three in a row in two months. If they can avoid that tonight, they'll move on with a chance to defend their American League crown. I welcome in Hall of Famer John Smoltz. The last time the Indians were in an elimination game, John, it was game seven of the World Series, and they had Corey Kluber on the mound. That's the man they turned to again tonight. Yeah much different circumstances though he's on regular rest and that's the plan Terry for Icona had when he came into this series having a game five if they needed to play it Kluber on regular rest and why not the second half he was 11 and one he has to get a little bit better in his fastball command that bullpen session worked it out you see what he did against right handers on the year but five out of six in game two got to him so Kluber he just has to correct that the Indians are in good shape. On the other side, CC Sabathia, he's not unnerved by this situation. He loves the postseason. You see the numbers. Nobody's pitched more games or innings in this ballpark. As a visitor, he'll return to what once was home, and he'll just need to give Joe Girardi enough so that he can go to the pen. Look, Indians fans are enthusiastic. We can hear that in the ballpark tonight, in part because the team's back home, and in part because they've got Edwin Encarnacion back. Their DH is healthy after hurting himself in game two, starting at clean up tonight. Absolutely. What a better time because they're in their offense needs it and they need the boost from this guy because he is the power guy in the lineup and for the Indians they've been shut down the last two games by the starters of the Yankees so the Indians need to get their offense going in for a great one tonight and in going five games this series is not disappointed each team is undefeated at home each team has seen a shutout pitching gem. And both the Yankees and Indians have provided exciting moments befitting of the postseason stage. The young stars and the veterans alike have contributed. But who moves on for the right to play for a World Series trophy? Game five. Yankees and Indians is next.
And welcome back to the ALDS presented by Dushan on FS1. A rainy evening tonight. More like fall weather finally in this series. 61 degrees at first pitch here for game five as we send it down to the field to say hello to Tom Verducci. Thanks, Matt. Well, right here on this mound in 2001, CC Sabathia made his major league debut for the Indians. Since then, he's won more than 100 games for both the Indians and the Yankees. Won more games in this ballpark than anyone else. Went through alcohol rehab in 2015 and two months ago thought his career was over because of a knee injury. About that time, the Yankees traded for 27-year-old Sonny Gray, but tonight they trust a man 10 years his elder. After more than 500 games, the journey goes back to where it began tonight with the season in his hands. Now here's Ken Rosenthal. Tom, Corey Kluber addressed the mechanical flaw between starts. He was sitting too low on his backside, causing his arm to be late and his tempo to be off by nearly a full second. Pitching coach Mickey Calloway likened the problem to sitting too low in a chair. Makes it more difficult to get back up. You can also look at it like this. A basketball player doesn't bend all the way down before jumping. He wants to stay limber, stay athletic. Look for Corey Kluber to be more athletic and more effective tonight. Well, Corey Kluber coming off an outstanding 2017 season. He is the leading contender for American League Cy Young Award honors. His first five postseason starts were brilliant. Four and one with a sub one ERA. Game seven against the Cubs, as John Zardi mentioned, coming back on short rest. Four earned in four innings. And then game two of this series couldn't finish the third. Two very un Kluber like performances most recently in his postseason career. Back out there and ready to go to work tonight in a winner take all scenario as Brett Gardner digs in for the Yankees. Not a lot of change for Joe Girardi. Take a look at their one through nine. Didi Gregorius and Gary Sanchez flip for game four. They stay that way tonight. Bottom third has changed as well. Hicks, Ellsbury, and Frazier batting number nine. But it's been the same personnel grouping for Girardi for the most part in all five games. We are underway in Cleveland. And the first pitch to Brett Garner is bunted up the first baseline. Carlos Santana is there. One pitch, one out to start the ball game. One of the most, one of the things I miss the most is this right here. When you're with yourself, this walk in an elimination game for Corey Kluber and CC Sabathia, your thoughts are by yourself. You think about how you're going to pitch the lineup. It's the moment before you go to work. Nothing better than what Corey Kluber is getting to do and CC Sabathia is getting to do, and they're both trying to put their team on their back. Well, there were very few better than Corey Kluber during the regular season in either league. One gone for him as he goes to work on Aaron Judge. Judge finally broke into the hit column in this series in game four in the Bronx with a two run double. But it's been a season, postseason rather, distinguished by a lot of swing and miss for the American League's home run leader. 12 strikeouts, as you saw a moment ago. A strikeout and a walk in two trips against Kluber here in game two. The line for Kluber Friday night, just two and two thirds, allowed six earned runs. It was as surprising a postseason performance as any we've seen so far this fall. And he's on the field to make it two and one to judge. I tell you, it's so surprising that in September, his six starts, he gave up four total runs. And in one start in the postseason, he undid a whole month. So you would think he's going to be able to get back to the Corey Kluber that was on the second half roll to the tune of 11 and 1. Sweeping breaking ball swung out and missed, and it's two and two to judge. Didi Gregorius on deck. He too was hitless against Kluber in that short start on Friday night. Right. And a full count. Something we've said at least a couple of times a night in this series. Full count to Aaron Judge. Absolutely. Aaron Judge, as much as he strikes out, his eye is pretty good. He'll take his walks. The payoff pitch. Got him swinging. 
That nasty Corey Kluber breaking ball. Don't call it a slider. Don't call it a curveball. Just call it very tough. Well, this is the one that stays on the plate. Even though it ends up as a ball, it comes out of the hand looking like it's going to stay on the plate. And for Aaron Judge and anybody who's a great right handed hitter, you have no chance when he throws that pitch right there. It has such tight spin and it works off of an aggressive fastball. That's why I think the fastball success tonight out of Corey Kluber will go a long way. And you see the 13 strikeouts ties the all time postseason series. With a few more events to go. Yeah, a futility record that, uh, of course, Aaron Judge would want nothing to do with given his choice. Here's strike one to Didi Gregorius. Two for 16 in the series, a 287 hitter during the regular season. Gregorius has been eerily quiet ever since the three run home run in the bottom of the first in the wild card game last Tuesday. And it's a ball and a strike to Didi Gregorius. Well, they'd love to pitch him in. Now, he, Gregorius is a different hitter with two strikes. You can get him in a back foot situation, meaning the slider curveball in the back foot with two strikes. But they want to front door that two seamer. And here they're going to go with the slider. Back to back. The swing and a miss. Here's some of the keys, I think, for Kluber, and we've already touched on it. Establish the fastball, get command with that, shut down the righties, and don't be a hero. What I mean by that, 25 times he's gone six innings or more. That's really what you need. Nothing super. You don't have to pitch a complete game. Do what you do and turn it over to the next two great bullpen arms that Francona has. Gregorius with a drive to right field and go! Sir Didi's second of the postseason. A little bit surprised by the pitch. You see where they wanted to go. But where it ended up was right in that nice wheelhouse for Didi. They had buried that slider in. I thought they'd go double up and go to that back foot. Instead, they tried to throw it up and away, and up and away the wrong way for Corey Kluber and this Indians crowd. Boy, that looked a lot like the two strike fastball he got from Urban Santana last Tuesday in the Bronx. And in fact, it uh, was treated the same way. 1 0 Yankees. Gary Sanchez now. Sanchez homered against Kluber here in game two on Friday and takes a strike. Without getting into too much of the pitching intrigue and the decisions that will be made in this ball game, We've talked about it in regards to the Yankees in each game of the series. Scoring first might be more important for New York. And they've done just that tonight. This one, it looked like Corey Kluber had set aside that imposter that was in his uniform on Friday. Didi Gregorius gets to him with two out. Sanchez commits. A couple of strikeouts, but a solo home run. Game five is underway with the visiting Yankees grabbing an early 1-0 lead.
to the bottom of the first in our first look officially at Terry Francona's game five lineup. Lindor, Kipnis, and Ramirez off the top. Aside for sore eyes is their DH returning. Edwin Encarnacion batting cleanup. Carlos Santana's homered in the series. He's at first base batting fifth. Austin Jackson, Jay Bruce in the seventh spot. As low as he's hit in the series, Roberto Perez and Giovanni Urshela round things out for the Tribe. It is the 37 year old six time all star and former Cy Young Award winner CC Sabathia on the mound to make a postseason start for the 20th time in his career. CC has been unbelievable six and zero and nine ALDS starts and he's not afraid of this situation really the beginning of the game is the only thing that you got to get CC through the first through the third inning. Francisco Lindor oh. takes a ball to start the bottom of the first. Lindor was 0 for 2 with a walk against Sabathia on Friday night. Just 1 for 14 so far in the series. The one was a big one, of course, the grand slam here in game two <laughs> as he takes a strike. Saw the line on Sabathia on Friday, pitched into the sixth inning. It was a start that got better the deeper it went. As Lindor takes a strike, it's a ball and two strikes to him now. That's a big pitch for CeCe. It's a late slurve slash slider. It really does catch the hitters off balance because of the late break to it. It's not hard in velocity, but has a lot of late break to it. Since CeCe no longer throws 95-96, and after he's gone through all the physical ailments with his knee, he's learned how to pitch with a sinker, a changeup, and that slider in, out, up, down. Still the ball and two strikes to Lindor. For CeCe, the keys to the game, I think, are survive and advance. Basically, get through the first three innings. The first 25 pitches are key for him. Home away from home. We already talked about how comfortable he here is here where he started. And then throw your weight around. Be the big guy on campus. Control the mound. And a swing and a miss. Lindor late and fooled. And the strikeout starts the night for CeCe. Well, as we say hello to Kevin Burkhardt back in Los Angeles, KB, it looked like that uh, that Cubs Nationals game today was uh, a lot closer than it appeared. And a good one tomorrow night. Kyle Hendricks and Max Scherzer for the right to move on and play the Dodgers for the National League. Title. One oh, gone nice. as Jason Kipnis digs in now. Kipnis is four for 18 in the series. Had a hit against Sabathia here on Friday night. We mentioned how Sabathia's <laughs> night got better and better as it wore on Friday. He was down three to two with the bases loaded and one out in the second. MVP candidate Jose Ramirez, who's on deck now, was at the plate. And that was the moment that CeCe clicked it into gear. Retired 11 of the final 12 he faced, which actually was right in line with the way he operated all year. Ramirez has been eerily quiet in this series as Kipnis swings and misses two strikeouts start the night for the former Indian. Well again CeCe's showing he's got touch he's unnerved and he's got the feeling of that slider hitting the outside corner making it tough on the Indians hitters. The first three innings his ERA is 4.24 after that four through six pretty good 2.45 so you know that the first couple attention to details coming into the first inning. I was always taught that in the biggest games in the elimination games pitch your first inning like it's the ninth. set the tone for your team. A strike to Ramirez 0 and 1. I'd say he's setting the tone so far with two strikeouts and his team giving him a one nothing lead. Ramirez just two for 17 in the series so far he was hitless in two tries against Sabathia Friday and he too finds himself behind 0 and 2. 
What it also does as a visiting player is it takes the sting out of the crowd. That's what you always want. You want to just. I keep talking about the dull roar that you hear on the mound as a visiting pitcher in a huge game. Well that dull roar has been muted even duller after the home run by Gregorius in the top of the first. Ramirez grounds it up the line to third baseman Todd Frazier who gets his man a one two three start to the night for the six time all star to the second one nothing Yankees. The ALDS on FS1 is presented by Doosan, official partner of Major League Baseball and sponsored by Hankook Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. And by the 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. Well, Didi Gregorius puts himself into some pretty good company with that home run. Yankees with a home run in multiple winner-take-all games in the same postseason. Moose Scourin, Mickey Mantle, Yogi Barrett, David Justice, and that man, Didi Gregorius. The Yankees with better success and better recent success in winner take all games in the Indians. That's a story that was kicked around a lot the last couple of days. Greg Bird leads things off and takes a breaking ball for a strike. Bird, Castro, and Hicks. Well when you show those two managers they will both tell you that this is the hardest game in the world to manage no matter if you have Kluber on the mound or CeCe. It's reading the pitcher and knowing and guessing when to go to the pen. That's three strikeouts for Kluber tonight. So as a starting pitcher you know that going in this is not an ordinary start you try to tell yourself it is. I couldn't wait to pitch in these games but when you think about what you have to do to give your manager no hiccups no reason to, to think to pick up that phone and call the bullpen that's what Corey's hoping to do for at least five to six seven innings CC on the other side with Joe Girardi 
He's stealing innings and stealing outs because his pen is armed and ready to pick up the rest. One away here in the second for the second baseman Starlin Castro who doubled and singled against Kluber here on Friday night. Yeah, it's amazing that just kind of one eye at some of the other series and seeing some of the moves that are already been made in the middle of the series not even at a game five and having multiple starters pitch that is usually reserved for this type of game a game five where everybody usually is available. Castro with the bouncer over the mound from second base Ramirez near the bat and guns him out. Nice play by Jose Ramirez for out number two. You know we had to note when we went on the air the fact that 15 teams have come back from an 0 2 start in a series to force a game five nine of those teams have won. You would think as a result of the deficit the Yankees would still be playing a little tighter but Tom Berducci that doesn't seem to be the case tonight. No this is a younger looser bunch than those championship Yankee teams in the 90s and you could tell that before the game in the clubhouse playing video games crossword puzzles. And here in the land of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and with Aaron Judge at the controls blaring old school disco music the Bee Gees <laughs> staying alive indeed. Bet. The two gone now for Aaron Hicks the switch hitting center fielder homered against Kluber on Friday night. Well we've also talked to Joe and he loves the resilience of this team the ability for grinding out of bats coming back different points during the season when they had hit their lulls down 0 2 he believed in his team he wears it as an emotional manager that trusts his players. Oh, the shot corner to put Hicks behind 0 and 2. But the look on Aaron's face is uh, that pitch was not fair. of this in a two strike count has seen more combined strikeouts per game than any other postseason series in Major League history. So far Kluber and Sabathia on a pace to better that still. First four games of the series 94 strikeouts. That averages into just fewer than 24 per game. Two two to hit. All the way back to a full count now. But Ken Rosenthal reported in the first inning. The mechanics of Kluber look simple and they are simple but he still needs the timing of the hand he's got a short arm delivery tremendous movement he has to get his hand out and not have lateral movement but late movement and when his hands on top of the ball it explodes in the zone. The payoff pitch and he lost him on ball four fine plate appearance by Aaron Hicks behind Owen two. And drawing a two out base on balls. So now a chance for Jacoby Ellsbury batting eighth and DHing tonight. And it seems that the only little wiggle room in Joe Girardi's lineup in this series has come at this position as he has jockeyed between Chase Headley and Jacoby Ellsbury. And not facing a left handed starter in this series, Matt Holliday. The veteran RBI guy has not been able to crack the lineup. The two players that have DH have not had a lot of success in the series, both Ellsbury and Headley. They have combined to go 0 for 14, and it's unusual because the Yankees' DH spot was a rather productive one for them this year. Yankee DHs had the third highest OPS in that position in the American League. Yeah, but I wonder how many times they faced Kluber, Carrasco, and Bauer in back to back to back games in a series. That'll put you in a little bit of a funk. Got that right. For Kluber, he wants that spot. 
to his glove side to be more natural. Looks like he's pulled a couple pitches trying to get it to that inside part of the plate against left handers. That's his natural go to. That's where the majority of his strikeouts are. And when he throws this slider he wants it to be to the right shin guard of his catcher. Like that. That is an impossible pitch to recognize as a hitter especially a left handed hitter. And when Kluber's right He's going to follow this up with that comeback sinker that starts inside and buries the inside part of the plate where the left hander kind of gets out of the way and gets a lot of called strikes. Another two strike count for Kluber. Hicks it first with two gone and a little check in to make sure he hasn't forgotten about Kluber. Aaron Hicks stole 10 bases during the regular season. Neither team has done a lot of running in this postseason series. Two and two. Such a nasty pitch. Velocity is up. You would expect it to be. He didn't go very deep in game two. Tried to bite off a little bit more. If he had the confidence and does have the confidence with that two seam fastball, he could bury it in right now and catch that inside part of the plate. And that one hit him apparently. No, oh, interference with he has done so well. Interference indeed. Roberto Perez is called with catcher's interference, and Ellsbury gets a base out of it. And we'll take a look at that again. Well, he's got the most in baseball, does he's got a longer swing, and on a breaking ball, he just catches the top of the glove. I believe fastball, he wouldn't have the time to do that, but breaking ball, you stay back, he recognizes it. Go down as a E2, right? Yes. And pretty clear as you saw it on the super slow mo replay. It's worth mentioning here that Jan Gomes is usually behind the plate for Corey Kluber. With two outs, this is where Kluber's got to be better. He wasn't as good with two outs in game two. You got to bear down, get a quick out. You don't want long innings in these type of games. You want quick outs if you can, pour in strikes. It swings and misses. Oh no! Todd Frazier singled against Kluber on Friday and checks the swing there. Ball and no strikes. Ooh, I don't know. Pitcher in me wants to see that again. All right, pitcher in me was wrong. That is right on the board. I mean, that's a coin flip check swing. How's the home plate umpire feeling tonight? There's the breaking ball swung out of mist. You know, you wonder about one of the storylines in this game for both starters facing the same opponent in back to back postseason starts. Kluber did it three times in last year's postseason. He won one of those and lost one of those and had an ERA in the mid threes. CC has far more experience in that. Frazier lifts a fly ball in shallow right field. Ramirez out. It's Bruce coming in to retire the side. Nothing comes of the walk and the catcher's interference play, and the Indians get their DH back. He'll lead off the bottom of the second next.
Home runs mean more this postseason as T-Mobile's guaranteeing at least $1 million for hurricane recovery efforts with every home run hit worth $10,000. Help break a million dollars by tweeting hashtag HR4HR and T-Mobile will donate an additional $1 per tweet. A nice warm standing ovation given in advance of Edwin Encarnacion's first plate appearance tonight. Coming back a lot sooner than expected after what looked like a gruesome ankle injury here as he yanks that one foul. Yeah, it really is amazing. I know that when we first saw it, there was, at least by my account, zero chances I would have given him to come back. And credit him and the training staff and ability to get that ankle in a position to not affect him hitting. Game five. Wow. Terry Francona very confident about Encarnacion's ability to run the bases as well. That was a question in advance of his appearing tonight. Now, it's so important that he's in the lineup. They have such success in the games they won this year. He hit 30 home runs and batted 284. Ball two. You know, in this day and age of American League teams cobbling together multiple players to make out a DH spot, the Indians were one of the few teams that had the luxury of penciling in the same RBI guy every night. Swing and a miss, and that's number three for Sabathia tonight. Well, CeCe's done a great job to just establish himself. You don't want to give this crowd and the offense an opportunity to get back in it. And I know the Indians don't bunt much, and so that's not part of their game. But at some point with the guys that they can bunt, you would think that they would want to test CC around the mound and make him move a little bit. In this game, you've got to find a way to score and scratch runs off. You can't always rely on the homer. And CC, three strikeouts in the first four batters. Carlos Santana now. He has homered and driven in four in the series. Two of those four RBIs came against Sabathia here Friday night. Well, he likes the off speed against left handers, so part of the reason why he's got good numbers off of CC. It's rare that you see a right handed hitter not hit the fastball as well, but really do a damage on the slider and curveball. But that's what Santana has done as a right handed batter. You know one of the things that distinguished CC this year in his bounce back campaign his best season since 2012 last time he was an all star. Is an increased usage in. More effective change up. Early in a ball game first time through the order regularly this year. He showed that pitch and had a lot of success with it. That was not the case as much on Friday night. Strikeouts tonight have come on a fastball and two sliders. And a ground ball to shortstop. Tom Perducci, a little different repertoire. The veteran changing his colors a bit here for the postseason. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mentioned the knee injury back in August. He was fearful that it might cut his career short, but. The MRI came back clean and he got a quarter zone shot and ever since then he's really found the feel for that slider batters hitting just 147 against that slider since then and we've seen him mix in more fastballs in game two he threw the most fastballs percentage wise since back in April this is a guy who's looking very strong yeah and had some of his best velocity of the season the entire season. In game two. Here's Austin Jackson now with two way and the base is empty. Indians looking for their first base runner tonight. Well, as I mentioned, you know, throw your weight around in one of the keys. He's a big guy and he extends off the mound. So you can imagine the hitters don't get a great, great view of the ball. He has a little bit of a hitch. Watch this hitch behind him. Pause and then he throws it. So they don't pick it up. So even though it's 90 miles an hour, 91, it may seem a little firmer to those guys. And that breaking ball looks like it's coming from the other's batter's box. So, so far early on, he's painting and putting the breaking ball where he needs to. Front of Jackson, one and two. And I can just tell you right now, there's not gonna be too many hitters that can hit this pitch. Top of the zone, above the zone. That sets up and brings in this breaking ball. Nasty 
four strikeouts for Sabathia tonight. That man's solo home run, the difference on the scoreboard. He'll bat third as we go to the top of the inning. One nothing Yankees. And early 1-0 lead for the Yankees as we move ahead to the third. Top of the order for New York. Brett Gardner, Aaron Judge, and Didi Gregorius. Corey Kluber yielded the solo home run with two out in the first. Pitched out of a jam in the second. Goes back to work here in the third. It might come as a surprise to hear that in a best of five postseason series, the road team has a slight advantage in game five. 21 and 19 is the road club in a situation like tonight's. The difference and Joe Girardi is aware of this as much as anybody is that he's facing Corey Kluber in his home. Well, a lot of pressure on the Indians of course and especially what they went through last year but more importantly the severe dominance they had in the second half. Everyone thought once they got up 2 0 this thing mail it in yeah. because this is the best team in baseball and this is the best stretch we've ever seen in baseball. But not so fast. Ball and two strikes to count to Brett Gardner. See that's the pitch right there. That's the pitch he's getting just a little bit underneath. What makes Corey unhittable is when he throws that down at the knees and it has that late movement. You can just tell a little bit his body is in front. He gets underneath. He doesn't miss the target by that much usually. So 
Well, those are the signs you're trying as a pitcher to not reveal to the other team because you want you don't know if his house is on fire or if he won the lottery because his emotions are so in check there's no demeanor change. So all you're looking for as a hitter at the plate is oh shoot he's on or there's a crack in the arm or let's take advantage of a mistake. Two two to Gardner's whacked into right field. And Gardner's aboard to start things in the third. That side of the plate is the money zone, and right now it just hasn't been as locked in. See the movement over the middle, and that's doing a favor to Brett Gardner. Stress early so far on the fans, but more importantly, on. Kluber till he gets to that point where it looks like he's playing catch and every pitch has an opportunity to look like a strike. So now Aaron Judge just three for 20 in the series in the postseason rather and only one hit so far in this series. And a big swing and a miss. He'll do that. He will swing at balls out of the zone. Well, he's so big and so strong that you've got to leave it in the middle of the zone right now, especially on a breaking ball. If you dot that outside corner, very difficult unless he has the approach of going to right field, which right now in this series looks like he's trying to pull a lot of the pitches, which is good for the pitcher. Statcast powered by AWS and Aaron Judge has swung at a bigger percentage of pitches outside the strike zone than anyone else in baseball. And as often as it may have happened during the regular season, it's happening just a bit more here in the postseason. With all the video and everything the pitchers can watch, the hitters will tell you a lot based on their approach and what they're trying to do. Your job as a pitcher is to expose it constantly. Corey Kluber threw Aaron Judge 17 pitches in the two plate appearances he had on Friday. 11 of those 17 pitches were breaking balls, falling right in line with exposing what seems to be a bit of a weakness here in the postseason and since the All Star break, to be quite honest. Gardner at first to start the inning, a ball and two strikes on Aaron Judge. Well, that's not a record he's going to want to talk about, but it is a record nonetheless. And in Aaron Judge's defense, there's really only been a couple of mistakes he's missed in the series. They have pitched him extremely tough, as you would imagine, a guy with his kind of power and the fact that he does expand the zone. But a lot of these pitches, and for the most part, what I've watched, the pitchers, you tip your hat. That one might be one of those that he just kept getting his eyes further and further and further away. And ultimately got him to swing away. So now Didi Gregorius, the man whose swing got the Yankees on the scoreboard back in the first. Gregorius had a franchise record for a shortstop, 25 during the regular season. Gardner. DD, two left handers right on top of the plate, begging you to get the ball in there. And if you make a mistake, you've already seen what DD was able to do with it. Swinging a high fly ball, angling toward the seats. You know, DD Gregorius keeps this up. Not only performing in the regular season, but the drama in the postseason. He'll go even farther in silencing the few Yankee fans that still may exist that pine for the days of Derek Jeter. And no one could have imagined anybody filling those enormous shoes.
Dini three, Indians zero. Shell shot. Yeah, absolutely. The Yankees have come in here and taken a lot of sting out of the crowd. Didi, of all the home runs he hits against right handed pitcher, the lower third is the majority, nine of them. Another slider that didn't get quite in off of Kluber. Seeing it good. Crowd going, okay, that's it. No more. And that's what Kluber's going to have to do. He's going up, no more. Before tonight, only two Yankees had enjoyed a multiple home run game in a winner take all situation. Jason Giambi in the 2003 ALCS and the great Yogi Berra in the 1956 World Series. And already that has put Andrew Miller in the pen, warming up in the third inning. And no one might have been able to predict that would be the case. No, of all the situations you think you may need to prepare for, Kluber exiting in the third inning again was not among them. Well, that one, lower third, didn't dive left, stayed over the middle. Didi knew it right away. And he stayed on that pitch as if he knew it was coming. And that extra little turn to the left. That we are have come accustomed to see out of Kluber was not there, and Didi, holy cow! You talk about the Yankees three games ago, right in the script. Here's Greg Bird now. Sends it on the ground to Ramirez, who's in short right in the beer league rover position and throws him out. Not before more DD damage. Solo shot in the first, put the Yankees on the scoreboard. Two run blast here in the third gives the visiting Yankees a 3 0 lead.
Welcome back to game five of the ALDS presented by Dusan on FS1. Didi Gregorius is the hero of the moment. Still early tonight, but two home runs against Corey Kluber have lifted the Yankees to an early 3 0 lead. CC Sabathia perfect his first two, two innings tonight. We'll go back to work on Bruce Perez and Urshela, bottom of the Cleveland order. You know, it was almost 16 years ago to the date when CC Sabathia made his first career postseason start. Game three of the 2001 ALDS, and that night he had a lot of home run pop behind him. Juan Gonzalez, Kenny Lofton, and Jim Tomey went deep against the Mariners. CC and the Indians won 17 to 2. 20th career postseason start comes almost 16 years to the day after his inaugural fall performance. I know we got pretty good mic. Sounds like Bruce broke his back, but he doesn't think so. <laughs> Jay Bruce hanging around, still 0 and 2. Roberto Perez next. Bruce has homered twice in the series. Perez has gone deep as well. It's an Indians team that came back from a five run deficit against CC Sabathia and the Yankees here on Friday night. They put themselves in an early hole again. Well, CC on the year has pitched better on the road, and he's also pitched better when his team has the lead. And that's what they have right now, and he knows. Give my manager as many innings as I can without showing any faltering at any point where he's got to get the boys going. Because we've already seen Miller up, and Kluber's going to be on a short leash from this way forward. Well, I would guess that even in a best case scenario, if Kluber goes out there and throws a couple scoreless innings, I'd be surprised if he faces Didi Gregorius again tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, made two mistakes, and Didi has paid him for it. Made him pay for it. And a swing and a miss by Bruce. Five strikeouts for CC Sabathia, who looks like he's turned back the hands of time tonight. 20th overall pick in 1998 by the Indians. Spent the first seven and a half years of his career here. Won a Cy Young Award in 2007. Three All Star appearances as an Indian. Traded to the Brewers, went 11 and 2 with Milwaukee in 2008, then signed with the Yankees the following year, led them to a World Series title in 2009. All told, he is the active strikeouts leader in Major League Baseball and will be on the market at season's end. Here's Perez shortening up. CC slides, takes a huge divot out of the turf, and Perez is retired. Well, like I said, I think that's the right idea, whether it makes CC happy or not. You've got to be able to do things like that, especially uh, in these kind of environments. And <laughs> CC definitely came off the mound and got down and got that ball. But I mean, this is the right play. And if he gets that ball down, you know, who knows what happens? Starts a rally. You see the knee brace, of course, digging into the the divot that looked like the old divots that Glavin, myself, and Smoltz, and Maddox used to take in the, when we first started playing golf. Did you just go third person on me? There? I didn't want to. I was trying to go Maddox. I said myself, <laughs> Glavin, and Smoltz. <laughs> Tells you where I am in game five. That is a big league divot. I mean, that, that's what happens when a guy that's 6'6, 300 pounds goes into the oh. dirt like that with a knee brace on. He's going to leave a mark. Of course, a lot of rain today. So two gone for Giovanni Urshela. If you see that divot on the ground, and I ask you, A, was this caused by a human knee, or B, the skid out of a monster truck? <laughs> it could have been uh, Terry Francona's scooter. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Giovanni Urshela. One for nine in the series. He takes a strike. Put 
when a guy's in this good of a groove already right from the start you try whatever you can to alter that or at least change his demeanor. And right now CC will have none of it right back to even. CC has been efficient all year long averaging fewer than 15 pitches per inning third lowest among all big leaguers with more than five starts. And he is perfect tonight through three. Six strikeouts for Sabathia. And this reminder please replace your divots. Play ball is Major League Baseball's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation, making play opportunities available and fun for everyone. To learn more, go to playball.org. A 3 0 lead for the Yankees. Corey Kluber back to work, top half of the fourth. Starlin Castro, Aaron Hicks, and Jacoby Ellsbury for New York. A pair of home runs by Didi Gregorius, the story so far tonight. And had it not been for Didi, this comparison might look a little bit more even. 11 combined strikeouts. CC Sabathia has been perfect for three straight innings. That's yeah, amazing. Oh. It's amazing how just even in the beginning, I was looking at some of the film and watching what I thought, you know, Kluber could do is be better against the right handers. Well, he has. He's taking care of the right handers. It's the left handers that have done him in. Single by Gardner, two home runs by Gregorius. Two balls and a strike to the right handed hitting second baseman Starlin Castro. It's amazing how things can work out because, again, over the course of the last 15 starts, nobody in the game's been better than Kluber. Well, that's that. And at one point in the season, nine straight games, he had given up a homer. 
And in that stretch, he was six and one. And that was basically all the runs he was given up. So the home run is not impossible against Kluber as long as they're solo home runs. And in this case, a solo home run and a two run homer. You know, it's not like the Yankees were his kryptonite either, because two regular season starts against New York, both coming in August. One was a complete game three hitter. And in the other, he threw eight innings at three hit ball, struck out seven. It's been a different story in this division series, however. Another full count, three balls and two strikes to Castro, leading off the fourth. That's six for Kluber tonight. Hey, a reminder tomorrow, it's a winner take all game five in the NLDS between the Cubs and Nationals on TBS. Then on Friday, Jose Altuve and the Astros are waiting in the wings to take on the winner of tonight's matchup in game one of the ALCS. Coverage begins Friday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on FS1. Kyle Hendricks and Max Scherzer. In game five tomorrow between the Nats and Cubs as that series goes back to D.C. The winner gets the Dodgers in the NLCS. Here's Aaron wow. Hicks. That's Scherzer on short rest. And he delayed his start because of a, an issue. But he was fantastic in his game. And you know the energy and adrenaline he'll have times ten what Kluber has. But both oh, no. nasty. It's been short rest madness. It's been staff faces entering ball games in the third and fourth inning in elimination games. I mean, throw all the conventional pitching wisdom out the window with what we've seen, for better or for worse, so far this last week. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, and I guess, you know, these decisions will be talked about, but it is a journey to win the World Series. And a team that can play. Each series with the best formula of normalcy will have a better chance. That's why the Dodgers are sitting and waiting. Three balls and a strike. Kluber not missing by much with that fastball. Yeah, the Dodgers had well pitched starts. Dispatch to the Diamondbacks in relatively short order. Hicks sends a drive out to center field. That one chasing Kipnis to the track before he can put it away. Well, here's some data for you in talking about these these pitching usage ideas. The last three postseasons, when a starter goes six or more, the team is 45 and 24. When a starter goes less than six, the team is 42 and 63. So almost mirror images of one another. That stands to conventional wisdom, right? Yep. The longer the starter goes, the better off you are set up in your bullpen use and, and you're better shape for a win. Could you read that one more time? Because I think there's some people watching the game that will not really understand what you just said. I will. I'll give, I'll give it to you again. I'll lay it out in a different different term. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury now with two gone. I'll give it to you in terms of winning percentage. Starter goes six innings or more. 652 winning percentage. That's pretty good, right? Starter goes less than six. 400 winning percentage. That's not good unless you're talking about a batting average. <laughs> Correct. So think about it in terms of the Yankees, right? This was supposed to be a Yankee staff that was going to piecemeal together each game of the postseason because their starters didn't go as deep as some of the other postseason teams. That guy goes seven. Yep. That guy goes seven. They win both of those games. Sabathia is rolling tonight, and they're in pretty good shape. That's how you do it. Don't get cute. Two balls and a strike. Feed your horses. Let them eat. And use your eyes. I think that's a Crosby Stills and Nash song. <laughs> Except for the use your eyes. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Three and one to Ellsbury now. Kluber looking for his first one, two, three inning of the night. And we're in the fourth. And 
there's ball four. Think about this series. Trevor Bauer was dominant in game one. The Indians win. The outlier here was game two when the Indians got the short start from Kluber and they had to piece together a bullpen game and then have the heroics to come back offensively from a five run deficit and then Tanaka and Severino took over in the Bronx the last two days. Here comes Terry Francona. And that's going to be all for Corey Kluber. Wow. The leading contender for the AL Cy Young honors went two and two thirds on Friday three and two thirds tonight and it's officially a bullpen game for the Indians. We'll be right back. Corey Kluber removed in the fourth three and two thirds responsible for a base runner the two home runs by Didi Gregorius his undoing tonight and now it's Todd Frazier to go to work against the first of what promises to be many from the Cleveland bullpen left hander Andrew Miller. Yeah, even though Corey Kluber wasn't maybe the Corey Kluber, I thought Terry might give him one more hitter with a right hander up that he's handled all the right handers. Frazier being that guy. But Miller was up early and up again, and I don't think he wants to run Miller up and down too many times. Yeah. Might as well get him in the game. Two balls and a strike to count to Todd Frazier. And now what you're hoping and really what baseball hopes that every guy they bring in is going to be on his A game. The more guys you bring in the more chances that one guy is not locked in. Well the Indians picked up Kluber after the short start on Friday and they'll have to do the same thing again. In order to avoid the elimination tonight. Meanwhile the Yankees feeling pretty good about themselves into the bullpen early two balls and two strikes on Frazier and a swing and a miss Kluber and Miller combine on a scoreless fourth to the bottom of the inning still three nothing Yankees.
Well, nobody's won more games in this ballpark than the man you're looking at right there wearing a visiting uniform. Left-hander CC Sabathia. 51 career wins here. All but three of them came as an Indian. He is doing it against the old uniform tonight as he starts Francisco Lindor with a strike. And this may sound crazy to some, but I think this is the most important in inning for the Indians because of what's looming in the bullpen for the Yankees. They have to make something happen in this inning. Top of the order, starting with Lindor. Oh. Lindor, Kipnis, and Ramirez here in the fourth. Sabathia perfect through the first three. And there's a base hit in the left field. You know it as a pitcher. CC knows he wants to keep the traffic minimal. If nothing else, find a way to not let a rally get started. But the Indians know that their internal clock is ticking and what looms in the bullpen is a lot of velocity and a lot of outs. Well dating back to his game two start on Friday CC Sabathia had retired 20 of the last 21 Indians hitters before that Lindor knock. And here's Kipnis now he takes a strike. Well, the last inning and a half about two to three inches is the side outside to lefties inside to righties is the place where pitchers can go for maybe an inch or two. Other than that everything's been called kind of right in the strike zone area. And yeah, quickly that, 0 and 2 to Kipnis. And what that does Matt to the hitter is it expands the zone naturally on a pitches away. So if CC can hit those spots and put that pressure on the hitters especially the left handers out there that'll be difficult. Here's the good news for Cleveland. They're nine and one in the postseason when that guy records at least one hit. Lindor aboard. And Kitten is caught looking. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. He goes away on three pitches on Sabathia's seventh strikeout of the ball game. Slider, slider, slider. And it's so comfortable with the angle and arm that he throws against left handers you know that he sets his sights really good there's the slider spin and the grip. And here's what you're seeing at home a hitter sees not a whole lot. Of time coming out of that small ball coming from behind that big body. Jose Ramirez with a bouncer to second Castro's got a hurry gets it to first just in time. Very close play, one that's being looked at, we're quite sure, in the Indians' video room. Bench coach Brad Mills on the phone to see if it's worth the challenge. No challenge by the Indians. Well, this thing off the kind of cut, right when it gets by, you see the kind of grip that he had to throw. He didn't have much on it. Good job by Bird staying on the back. Like he might have committed a little early trying to anticipate where the ball was going to come from Castro on the move. Here's Encarnacion now struck out the second and a big swing and a miss here to start his second plate appearance. Encarnacion faced Sabathia once on Friday was hit by a pitch and then entered the right ankle on base. CC doing a masterful job getting in front quickly. Boy, Encarnacion, he's not feeling for it. He's letting it fly. Oh, yeah. Oh. 1 1. What's amazing in this series so far is how Yankee left handed pitching has completely neutralized the Indians. Cleveland does not have a single extra base hit against a Yankee left-hander in this series. And during the regular season, the Indians had more extra base hits against left-handers than any other team in the American League. And more homers. That's it, it is amazing. They have been completely shut down. And 
Carnacion behind one and two. And strikeouts for Sabathia today. CC's never looked better at the age of 37. Eight strikeouts over four shutout innings. Sabathia and the Yankees lead it 3 0. Well, here is how the bottom of the fourth ended, and he puts a lot of pressure, does CC. That's probably not a strike. Edwin Encarnacion is right, but CC has been so good at hitting his spots, he gets the benefit of the doubt on that last pitch. Brett Gardner leads things off in the Yankee half of the fifth. Andrew Miller continues. We'll get the top of the order here. Gardner, Judge, and Gregorius. Brett singled and scored in front of Didi's second home run of the game back in the third. Well, if you're Andrew Miller, you know that you've got just basically a couple innings. So the quicker the pitches and the quicker the outs, maybe you can extend them a little more than you would. But the Indians now are just trying to keep this game absolutely at three and trust their offense will come back. Andrew Miller since a couple different stints on the DL his knee coming back probably not as locked in as he was last year. Two and two. I still can't believe he's in the ball game this early. I mean it, we came to the ballpark twice in this series thinking Kluber and Sabathia Cy Young Award winners long starts. Two and two thirds from Kluber Friday, three and two thirds today. And you know, I, I know the system is set up and it's been set up a long time like this, but when you think about the off days and the ability to change the way you manage in the postseason, that's why certain things are different than they are in the regular season. You would never do this in the regular season. Yeah. And you would never be able to pitch your greatest weapon this many times in a three or four day span, but with days off. You can do that and piecemeal a game or two.
Well, going back to Game Seven of the World Series last year, and again, as John mentioned, the disclaimer on that is that he was coming back on short rest and facing the same opponent the third straight time. So that's an outlier. Gardner pops that one up behind the plate and into the seats. In the wild card era, and I think this is interesting. Nine times a pitcher who has been roughed up in a postseason series got that same uniform in his next start. And for the most part, in that given that second chance, the starter comes back and has better success. It just didn't happen tonight. The Yankee fans will remember the first of those nine occasions. Andy Pettit came back after getting roughed up in game one of the World Series and then threw eight and a third shutout innings to beat John Smoltz and the Braves. I, I blacked out. What was that again? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I completely I blacked out. Slipped that one past the goalie there. Still full three and two. Well, even in the first game where Kluber dominated, I mean, uh, Bauer dominated. The Yankees have had really good at bats against Andrew Miller. Yeah. They've had good at bats against a lot of their relievers that have made them work. And you could just see that if they could come back in the series, which they have, that would be their benefit moving forward. Well, the longest at bat of the postseason so far was against Andrew Miller. And it was Chase Headley who drew a walk here in game two against him. This one's coming close. This is 10 pitches. That was a 12 pitch at bat in game two. And Gardner giving his teammate a run for his money here. 11. We talked about this earlier. It's just, it's in the Yankee DNA. Long plate appearances as far back as most of us can remember. on FS1 is presented by Doosan, official partner of Major League Baseball. And is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live mod. And by T-Mobile. This postseason, there's a new leader in network, T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Andrew Miller's faced three batters, two batters in this game, rather, and struck out both of them. And now it's Aaron Judge who punched out twice against Corey Kluber tonight. Breaking ball, judges undoing against Kluber. I was looking forward to this matchup in probably different circumstances, but Judge has never faced Andrew Miller. And just to see the kind of arsenal that he will see off of Miller, so much different than anybody else. Pitch, even though it didn't register in the strike zone. Again, six foot seven, six foot eight. You're not going to be able to go down there and do anything with that. You can see why. And the breaking ball, judges undoing against Miller as well. Three straight strikeouts for Miller. It's amazing to you know Miller faces primarily right handers and he looks more comfortable against right handers right now with the way that he throws the pitch. And that down and in slider where left handers can maybe see it a little bit longer than 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 normal you would think left handers have no chance against Andrew Miller and by the long ball they really don't. But there's been some left handers on this Yankee lineup that have really given him. You know we saw Gardner and Didi will hang in there. Here is Gregorius. Solo shot in the first, two run blast in the third. First player with three home runs in a winner take all game in a single postseason. Again, he had that 
wild card three run shot against the Twins last Tuesday, a pair of them tonight. Greg Bird had a real good at bat against Andrew Miller earlier in this series. So you're seeing one of the best relievers just about every game in a situation we never thought of. Before Jose Altuve had his two home run game against the Red Sox in game one of their ALDS just last week, the last multiple home run game in the postseason was in the Oakland, Kansas City wildcard game of 2014 when then A. Brandon Moss went deep twice. Another base hit for Didi. I'm telling you, he just doesn't come off the fastball against left handers. You saw him swing at some sliders. And Andrew Miller tried to sneak the cheese by him, and there's not a lot of wasted movement with two strikes for Didi Gregorius. He might take bigger swings before two strikes, but watch how compact this is. No wasted movement, foot down, and he gets the barrel of the bat to the ball on a guy that's as nasty as it gets. You know, John, for whatever reason, there is no MVP awarded in the division series. Right. First of all, that's got to change. I'm not sure why that's the case. If there was, however, you're looking at him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at least at this point of the night. A lot of baseball left, as they say. Here's Gary Sanchez. He has struck out twice tonight. Well, just the fact. And again, the resiliency of the Yankees can't speak to it enough. Just the fact that they're in this position, and Judge and Sanchez. Sanchez had a much better series, but Judge is one for 18 now. On the ground at third. Urshela, the short way to cut down Gregorius. Nothing comes at the two out single. Middle of the night. Yankees still on top, 3 0.
CC Sabathia has been dominant tonight in a three nothing New York lead Carlos Santana Austin Jackson and Jay Bruce start things in the Indians half of the fifth only one hit for Cleveland tonight. That was Francisco Lindor's leadoff single in the fourth Sabathia has struck out eight one shy of time his postseason all time high. Well you couldn't ask for a better script and a better start for Joe Girardi and now from this point on he'll have his eyes on CC and his eyes on the bullpen. And the reason I say that is because the bullpen has been now given a chance to rest a little bit by those last two starts by Tanaka and of course Severino. A ball and two strikes to the one hitter in the Cleveland lineup that can claim the most career success against Sabathia. Santana drove in a couple of runs against CC on Friday, 11 for 21 career against him entering the night tonight. That's one of the first uh, changeups that kind of cut on him. He's trying to go. Fade away with that pitch. To come right back with the slider if he wants. Still two and two to Santana. And there it was, Santana. Good numbers off the of CC coming into this. But at this point, the numbers don't mean anything because the pressure's mounting. For the Cleveland Indians lineup. They know they haven't done much of late and they got to get it going fast. Nine strikeouts for CC Sabathia tonight. Well, if you missed the first couple innings, this is what you missed. CC has been on his game, swing and a miss. There's been a lot of them, a lot of sliders. A lot of K's and every one of them have been big and they've shut down this crowd. This crowd came in with high expectations, but CC once an Indian, right at home here as a visitor. Wow, he has been good. You know, it seems every time CC pitches these days, he goes to work on Austin Jackson. We spend so much time talking about how he might not be the CC Sabathia of old. Different repertoire, velocity not what it used to be, strikeout totals not what it used to be. Well, forget all that tonight because this is as though he tore a page right out of his 2012 season. You know, I've always said what makes a postseason pitcher or what allows a guy to go out there and not feel the moment or the pressure. And CC has all the pedigree for what he's been through personally what he's been through in his past and he's used that experience and that calmness to utilize the opportunity to be successful in a game where maybe a lot of people didn't even think he'd be the starter. And that's what Joe Girardi has drawn from. He knows that there isn't a moment too big for CC that doesn't guarantee nine strikeouts but it sure helps. Two balls and a strike to Austin Jackson. Jackson into the gap. Cleveland has its second base runner of the night. Hicks and Gardner doing a nice job to get over there and cut that ball off, limiting the speedy Jackson to just a one out single. Nice job by Hicks. The less you can get in scoring position, the better. Hicks gets over there quickly, and even the speed of Jackson knows not worth it down three. Jay Bruce has experienced both ends of the spectrum in this series. He was one of the heroes in game one behind Trevor Bauer with a home run homered in game two to tie the game at eight. Game three struck out four times against Masahiro Tanaka and company. Four for 17 altogether in four plus games of the series. That's amazing how quickly it can change. And the 
Indians putting something together for the first time tonight. It's a big hit for Jay Bruce considering his struggles against left handed pitching. Well normally Gomes catches Kluber. Perez catching him tonight. Perez has come up with some big hits and some unlikely power. Three of them last year in the World Series. Already this year, so maybe he's got a little magic left in that bat. Terry's hoping if nonetheless he can just keep the line moving. Jackson and Bruce aboard with one away. Chance of a double play, not a lot of speed out of Perez. The Yankees, on the other hand, turned fewer double plays than any team in baseball this year. The 0 1. A ball of a strike to Perez. See the bullpen going now for the Yankees. You got to lock in as you do your part, not try to do everything at once, and really look to take a pitch and drive it. Anything that he makes a mistake, Perez is looking to lift the ball. He'd rather lift the ball than hit it on the ground, obviously, in this situation. being waved around he'll score and the Indians are on the board in game five. I'm sure Rothschild will go out and give him some time maybe make the bullpen get a little ready. But a good piece of hitting right here not trying to do too much get it up in the air and he does the opposite way. And he passes the baton on to the next guy. I'm not saying they're going to do it in this situation, but the undefensible play right here, Matt, first and third, is the push bunt to first base side of, of CC Sabathia. It guarantees you a run. You get one closer, and you got a guy on second with two outs and Lindor up. It's undefensible. If executed correctly, can't turn two. CC's not going to come off the mound and get the runner. The runner reads the play. Let's see what Terry chooses to do with Ursula at the plate. Well, his number nine hitter, Giovanni Urshela, has executed a sacrifice in this series. The guy who Francona is very comfortable bunting with, whether or not he decides to do it here with runners in the corners, remains to be seen. Swinging away, 0 and 1. Has three straight one out singles that have put the Indians on the board here in the fifth. Because the reality here for the Indians, they have to score this run, even if it's not a hit. They got to stay out of the double play. They've got to get this run in. And then it's a battle of the bullpens. Urshela's just one for ten of the series. But it should be noted that down the stretch from September 1 on to end the regular season, he hit 364 with runners in scoring position. His bat responded to everyday play. The 1 1. Into right field once again. Urshela shortens up and punches an RBI single the other way. Oh, what a fine approach by Giovanni Urshela. Redeeming himself after a two error game in game four. And it's a one run game. And that's going to be all for Sabathia. As dominant as he was through four and a third. Four straight one out singles, a couple of runs, and the Yankees are going to the bullpen. 
popped up for the first time since the opening pitch. Regressive field is alive. And so are the defending American League champs. We'll be right back. Saturday, it's college football on FS1. First K-State hosts number six, TCU at noon Eastern. Later, it's a Big Ten matchup. Number nine, Ohio State squares up with Nebraska at 7.30 Eastern. It's all on FS1 and streaming live on FS Go. Yeah, they're back into it. Four straight one-out singles who put the Indians on the board. They're threatening with runners at first and second here in the fifth, and it's... A move to the bullpen as CC Sabathia apparently hit the wall here in the fifth inning. He pitched great tonight. Four and a third, struck out a postseason career high nine, and leaves with two runners aboard in his responsibility. It'll be David Robertson to go to work. He has not faced Francisco Lindor in the series. He has two runners aboard to deal with, with only one away. That's the hard part to believe that he could possibly get the loss as good as he's pitched because he's responsible for those two. But the power curveball, that's what's tough for lefties when they're facing Robertson. Cutter and curveballs. Lindor takes a strike. Wow. That side out there. That's another thing that's tough on tough on lefties. I mean that that there's working him away and then there's that. That's eight inches outside. But that's been the plan against Lindor all series long. Jammed it, bounced to shortstop. Gregorius for one, the relay to Bird, they get them both. Damage minimized at two in the fifth. A well timed double play ball from David Robertson. We play five complete. It's a one run affair in game five.
Well, the bottom of the Indians order helped bring the tribe back with a couple of big base hits to make it a one run ball game. A new storyline for Andrew Miller as he goes back to work in the top half of inning number six. Greg Bird leads it off. It's Bird, Castro, and Hicks, a three to two Yankee lead. Well, it's come down to the battle of the two best bullpens in the American League, and who's going to blink? Can the Yankees hold on? And can the Indians keep it right at a three to two deficit? The formula that Terry Francona wanted was going to be a condensed version of Miller, Shaw, and Allen. And now it's going to be an extended one. This was the matchup that yielded the game winning swing in game three and helped the Yankees stave off elimination at home. Greg Bird homering against Andrew Miller. Behind here, a ball and two strikes. Miller came on for Corey Kluber in the fourth with two away and a man on. He has since struck out three and allowed a base hit. Check that, make it four. Budweiser game summary Didi Gregorius two home runs tonight a solo shot against Corey Kluber in the first got him again for a two run dinger in the third and again the Indians cutting into the deficit with a pair of runs on four straight one out singles in the fifth that not only got him on the board it knocked CC Sabathia from the mix get into a series like this an anticipated five game series which is what I thought we'd get with these two really good teams. Both have had an unorthodox and uncharacteristic game. What I mean by that, the Indians, so good defensively, came unraveled and made four errors. The Yankees, five run lead in game two. Bullpen usually locks that down. And here we have almost a dead heat in game five, three to two. Indians lead. We could not have predicted how we got here. Nobody saw it coming. However, most of us saw this one close yes. and down to the final couple of innings. An Indians bullpen that led the major league in ERA lined into left. And Starlin Castro has the Yankees second hit against Andrew Miller. Tough decision for Terry here. He's extending Andrew Miller. He'd like to have him. Face or force Joe Girardi's hand with ahead, Ellsbury. Uh, looks like he's going to roll the dice with his big lefty. We saw Chase Headley grabbing about a moment ago. He's had some success against Andrew Miller, including that 12 pitch at bat in game two that we talked about earlier. First things first, it's Aaron Hicks who has walked in line to center tonight. Switch hitter in from the right side for the first time this evening. Hicks has faced Miller twice in the series, 0 for 2 with a strike. One one. That's the pitch. It's so good. It starts away and has late break over the plate. So difficult on a right-hander to see this as a strike coming out of his hand, but that's where it ends up. That's a pass that Hicks would like to have back, and one that we've seen Miller. Lead to a number of times in the past couple of postseasons. It's rare with the kind of stuff that Miller has that you pitch off the third base side of the rubber as a left hander. But his angle and the way he throws across his body creates that deception to the right hander that he's throwing over there at the left hander's batter's box. With 97 on the inner half. That is virtually unhittable. And that's adrenaline. And that's given everything that he has. He knows he's got one more batter in him. And then hopefully the rest of his pals can take care of the rest. A 
outstanding pitch at the right time and you see Nick's just swinging under it. Andrew Miller has faced eight batters. He has struck out five of them. And as John mentioned possibly his final piece of business here here comes Terry Francona and is not going to get that far. Francona very aware of Chase Headley's success against Andrew Miller. And he's not going to let that happen here. A terrific appearance from last year's American League Championship Series MVP. We'll be right back. Every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics, undisputed with Skip and Shannon weekdays from 9:30 a.m. to noon Eastern, only on FS1. Second pitching change of the game by Cleveland. It'll be the veteran right-hander Brian Shaw, who has appeared in 70 or more games for five straight seasons. His number is called often, and he's had great success. Cutter, 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 and a breaking ball. Turned around, batting left-handed. Miller departs with five strikeouts among the eight hitters he faced. Castro at first is his responsibility. Shaw has had much more career success against Chase Headley than Andrew Miller. And that's all you need to know about the change here with a man on and two away. Uh, you can go farther in now without hitting on and maybe a little down if he chooses. Two strikes. Still nothing in two. Good pitches right there. 97 mile an hour cutter on the hands. Headley on the plate. Hard for him to lay off that pitch. It's almost Mariano Rivera like where the left hander's got to really cheat to hit that pitch. And he needs cheat really get the barrel out in front. A pair of Indian relievers combine on a scoreless top of the sixth. It's still a one run affair in game five.
Welcome back to the ALDS presented by Doosan on FS1. Back with Hall of Famer John Smoltz, Tom Verducci, Ken Rosenthal, Matt Vaskersian in Cleveland. Game five. The winner advances for a date with the Houston Astros in game one of the ALCS Friday on FS1. A one run game here in the bottom half of inning number six. Matt, I see you got your seatbelt off. Buckle your seatbelts. This is going to get great the next three innings. That's because I can't sit still. <laughs> 0 oh, and 1 to Jason Kipnis, who struck out twice tonight. He's happy to see anybody other than CC Sabathia on the mound. David Robertson is the man who came on for CC in the fifth. He rolled the double play ball that minimized the damage at two runs. But ever since that moment, the crowd here in Cleveland has been reinvigorated. Balls and a strike to Jason Kipnis. Well, Kipnis, Ramirez, one of these guys got to get a big hit. The first four in the lineup have had a hard time in the series, and it can all be undone. Chopper going to be a tough play. Robertson makes it into an easy affair by winning the race to the bag. So it's worth reiterating we, you know, we didn't know how we were going to get here. But most of us were pretty sure this was going to be tightly contested and go down to the final inning, if not final at bat of the night. That's the way this series has gone. It has. And, and like I said, these are two teams that easily can win the World Series. But one of these teams is going to have to win this game to do that. And it's been a battle of the bullpens, and it will be a battle of the bullpens moving forward. And each guy that comes into the game, you're basically looking at one at bat at a time. And that's all you can do. Robertson would like to deliver as many outs for Joe Girardi as possible and shorten the game even more. Well here's one of the guys that the Indians just need to get going. Jose Ramirez just two for 19 in the series so far. A couple of ground ball outs off his bat tonight. Guy who finished with 91 extra base hits during the regular season. Time for Thompson all the baseball takes a look at his strength. And it's hard for me to say this because I thought majority of what I would be saying would be a Kluber fact. Without Kluber being on his game, the pitching still in this series has exposed the guys who have struggled. They have not made mistakes. Bounce to Greg Bird. Gets it to Robertson in time for out number two. So Stack really cast powered by Amazon Web Services. I just want to show folks how the Yankees have neutralized one of the best hitters in baseball this year. They've made him chase. He hasn't had nearly as many fastballs to swing at, and what he has seen has not been in the middle of the plate as compared to the regular season. The Yankees have done a masterful job with him. And that's what I'm talking about, Matt. The game plan coming in has been executed for the most part by the majority of the pitchers. Because you're talking about a lineup that was really good in September in the Indians. And they have just, I haven't witnessed a lot of mistakes. There's not a lot that I could go. The hitters should have hit that. Edwin Encarnacion with two strikeouts on his line tonight. His first activity since injuring his ankle here in game two. Swings and sends a high drive to center field. Not deep enough to do any damage as Hicks has it for a 1-2-3 inning number six. We are headed to the seventh. Still 3-2 New York.
celebrate your favorite team with the latest official caps, t shirts, hoodies, jackets, and more. The latest postseason gear is at MLBShop.com. Todd Frazier leads things off in the Yankee half of the seventh. Frazier, then the top of the order, Gardner and Judge. Frazier hitless tonight, 0 for 2. After a 4 for 18 start in the first four games of the series. But think back at the moves that Brian Cashman and his staff made at midseason to make the Yankees the postseason team that they are. Yes, the learning curve on the young guys was accelerated. They got here quicker than anybody thought, but without the veterans that they brought in. They may not have been able to finish the job and get all the way here. There's a long fly ball out to center. And Frazier is first among those. It was the deal with the White Sox that brought he and Tommy Canley. A couple of those shore up deals at the deadline. And Frazier has meant a lot emotionally to the Yankees, something we talked to Joe Girardi about earlier today. Yeah, absolutely. He's been involved a lot in this series in a lot of different ways, defensively on the bases, and of course at the plate. He's a guy that is a different player than what he once was. The average will be down, but a power number still okay. And the, and the Yankees are having trouble at third and first base. Well, Burt's kind of settled into that now. The timing for Burt has been great. And Frazier has been a mainstay at third base. Free agent at the end of the year, and there is, boy, no shortage of need around Major League Baseball for a veteran third baseman. Ball with no strikes to Gardner, who's one for three tonight. I think one of the things that impressed me when we asked Joe Girardi about Todd Frazier is that he said he loves playing baseball. He's just always having a good time. And that might sound like something to the lay fan that's, well, no, duh, he likes playing baseball. But you might be surprised. Not everybody loves the game as much as the next guy. Gardner with a shot back up the middle that almost knocks Shaw's glove off. And the Yankees have a one-out base runner in the seventh. He's first on the top step. That is Todd Frazier. And that guy's on at first base with his big wheels. Brett Gardner's stolen 23 bases this year. Well, the cutter inside, but stays over the plate, and he goes right up the middle. This might actually be a better matchup for Judge. And what I mean by that, unless Shaw wants to go to the bigger breaking ball, if Judge stays up the middle, to right field on these pitches, he'll have success. Aaron Judge has struck out three times tonight. No player in postseason history has had a trio of four strikeout games in the same postseason. This guy, all the credit. He is a young player that has handled every situation this year with the utmost respect. Even when he's struggled, even when he's been successful. Even when he may not like the call. He shows up and he plays the game the right way. Judge's first ever meeting with Brian Shaw. You know, the strikeout story is just, it's too easy to grab onto with Judge without reminding yourself of what a great season he had. And it looked as though the strikeouts had corrected themselves in September, end of the regular season, reaching base safely in 25 straight. Had the big September with 15 home runs. But the strikeout, the walk, and the homer is something that you got a lot of, referred to as the three true outcomes. In fact, the last player to lead his league in homers, walks, and strikeouts was Dale Murphy from the 85 Braves. Short period of time in his.
his adjustment speaks to why he's going to have a long career. He went from not really being the right fielder out of spring training for sure to having that unbelievable season. Then they got exposed, got a little tired, got a little fatigued, and then made the correction in September. Now he's going to have to do the same thing the longer the Yankees are able to play in the postseason, adjust again. Okay. Again to Aaron Judge. Didi Gregorius waits next. Three for three with two homers tonight. Left-hander Tyler Olson up in the in the Cleveland bullpen. Here's the payoff pitch. Gardner runs. It's a cold strike three. Throw to second. And they got him. A strike him out. Throw him out. Double play gets the Indians out of the jam. Seventh inning stretch in game five. Still a one run game. Well, a strike him out, throw him out, double play ends the seventh. Brett Gardner thrown out after a called strike three taken by Aaron Judge. And it's still just a one run lead for the Yankees. David Robertson continues on the mound for New York. He'll get Santana, Jackson, and Bruce in the home seventh. A breaking ball starts Santana with a strike. Well, here's the pitch. That's one thing. And then the throw by Gardner. He's out. If the Yankees are down, I don't think Joe sends the runner and gets aggressive. They're up by one. He took a chance. And Judge laid off a pretty good pitch, but it ends up being a double play. One and one to Santana. 
not a lot of success in fact no success against David Robertson. One and two. And in a two strike count now as has been the case all season long Didi Gregorius and Todd Frazier switch places in the shift. So Frazier on the first base side of the second base bag. Santana would love to figure out a way to go on base in front of Austin Jackson. Who is the Indians best hitter in the seventh inning or later. A swing and a miss. David Robertson still perfect out of the Yankee bullpen tonight. He's retired all five of the batters he's faced. He's been awesome as for most of the year have the Yankees both had and you're looking at a situation now where OK you went out in the seventh you know what's looming Chapman who's been able to have success against you guys. So as a team you start thinking OK we're counting outs we got to we got to find a way to get a runner a scoring position or one swing tie the tie the ball game up as Canley gets ready. Canely pitched two scoreless innings in game four benefiting from yesterday's travel day off and the first pitch to Jackson misses up and away. Jackson had the first of the four straight one out singles in the fifth that got the Indians on the board for two runs. He too has struggled against David Robertson in his career. Good breaking ball to make it one and one. So peeking into the future of this game best case scenario for the Yankees they can finish the inning with Robertson and then Joe Girardi has a choice Chapman for as many as two innings he'll have Canley available Chad Green hasn't pitched since game two of this series that's a bullpen that's in pretty good shape yes it is. But in Joe's mind I think there's only three pitchers left or two more after this one. Two and two. You're thinking Chapman for two. No I'm thinking there's only two more possibilities. Canely if he if he has to come in this inning or maybe start the next inning and then you just play it as you go with prepared Chapman for any kind of issues moving forward. Jay Bruce waiting on deck for the Indians with one away and the base is empty. And ideally you'd like to have Chapman for one inning and give him the best one inning. But if you need him for multiple outs beyond one inning I'm sure he will be ready. Got him swinging. Back to back strikeouts for Robertson in the seventh. There's the cutter. Pretty much middle middle, but anticipating probably that power curveball, so you might be a little bit in between. Jackson with a strikeout 11 on the night now for Indian hitters who coming into the series in the American League were the hardest team to strike out. Yeah go figure. Jay Bruce is singled and struck out tonight and on a first pitch breaking ball it bounces it just wide of the bag. Nothing and one to Bruce. This was the matchup that yielded the game tying home run in game two here in Cleveland. And Bruce went the other way with that. He took a pitch, didn't try to do too much in the outer half, and used his strength. We've seen some hitters uncharacteristically, really, in this series get away from some of the things that have made him good. Now, again, I give the credit to the pitchers. 
But a lot of pull mode a lot of guys trying to get bigger with their swings and expanding the zone more than they typically do. That was the first ever meeting between Robertson and Bruce. A ball and a strike. is next he singled in a run in the fifth man that is a tough take <laughs> two three balls in a strike he spins that breaking ball so hard. Spike breaking ball, 12 to 6 break. Go to pitch. Three balls and a strike to Jay Bruce. Lost him on another breaking ball. And David Robertson wasn't going to give in there. No, and you don't blame him. I mean, that's basically passing it on to saying, okay, I think I got a better chance with the count in my favor against Perez than I do with a guy that already in the back of my mind I've given up a home run. Well, Roberto Perez has an RBI to his credit on a night Ken Rosenthal when a lot of us didn't think he was going to be in there at all. Matt, the Indians left their workout yesterday not knowing who their normal catcher would be. Normally, it's Jan Domes who catches Corey Kluber, but they went with Perez not because he's been swinging the bat well, but because he is excellent at adjusting to different pitchers, and the Indians knew they would be using a number of relievers in this game. Go back to game three of last year's ALCS. That was the Trevor Bauer bloody finger game. They used seven pitchers that night, and Perez was their starting catcher. He's already cashed in on his opportunity with the RBI single in the fifth. Represents the go ahead run here in the seventh. When you start thinking about Indians pinch hitting weapons, and it's probably too soon to do so. Michael Brantley, a non starter tonight. Veteran left handed hitter who came back from injury. Jan Gomes available off the bench, but that's your catching depth. Chisenhall. Lonnie Chisenhall probably first in line. And it's a ball and two strikes to Perez. Only one career meeting between these two. The first time they've matched up here in this division series. Giovanni Urshela waiting on deck. Curveball almost hit him. And I think Roberto might have been thinking, man, I should have leaned into that. And Robertson lost his footing. He got lucky he didn't hit him right there as he threw the ball. His landing foot didn't exactly get to where he wanted. Watch right here. Just kind of lands on his heel and it slides. Therefore, the ball backs up. He knows it right away. So he got away with one. See the reaction from Perez too. The bad news bear style lean, lean into it, Rudy. You want to win, don't you? Guys in the dugout saying, "We got ice." <laughs> so here's the two-two. Excuse me, swing and a comebacker that will get Robertson out of the inning. A runner left stranded to the eighth. And the guy responsible for the Yankee lead will lead off the inning.
The dynamic plays of the game are sponsored by Hankook Tire, and both of them, courtesy of Didi Gregorius, solo home run with two out in the first, quieted down the crowd. This one silenced the crowd tonight. A two-run shot also against Corey Kluber. Gave the Yankees a 3-0 lead that's since been tightened up to a 3-2 ball game. Brian Shaw continues, and the first pitch to Gregorius leading off the eighth is in for a strike. Gregorius, Sanchez, and Bird. Didi Gregorius has put himself into, I would say, very esteemed franchise company. Or could do so. Three home run games in postseason Yankee history. Babe Ruth twice. Reggie in 77 games. Six of the World Series against the Dodgers. Did it against three different pitchers on a total of three pitches. And a chopper to third for Urshela. And Gregorius retired for the first time tonight. The ALDS on FS1 is presented by Doosan, official partner of Major League Baseball. And is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. And by Hancock Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. Well, what Didi has done really, unlike most of the hitters, he makes you throw three perfect pitches. And that's what exactly Shaw did right there to get him out. Here's Gary Sanchez now. Sanchez has been held 0 for 3. If I were to have told you at the start of this series that the combination of Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez would have been held to a 5 for 38, you'd probably be thinking that the Yankees wouldn't be on top. And think about that. If the Yankees survive this night, they will have done so with arguably two of their most potent bats going as close to quiet as they've gone all year long. Yes, Sanchez has gone deep a couple times, but only five hits combined. Yeah, there's two things that you could have told me that I would have said the opposite exactly. You've talked about their offense or lack of it. Say that the Yankees aren't going to win. If you'd have told me Kluber in two starts was going to go less than five innings, no chance the Indians have it are moving on. And both going into the eighth inning have a chance to help their teammates out and give each one of those guys a reprieve to move on and see who can redeem themselves moving forward. Two and two to Gary Sanchez. Well, Francisco Lindor said after the dramatic game two comeback, Kluber has picked us up so many times all year. Tonight was our turn to pick him up. Wow. A full count now, three and two. Now Sanchez, even on a three-two count, there's an area down. If he goes down and away, that's where you can expose him. If you leave it in the middle third of the plate to belt high. It's uh, it's uh, you hope you, you you hope as a pitcher you're getting the ball back so you can still get him extended on this three two count on a cutter away but it has to be down and more than likely he will chase. Got him swinging. Chase is what he did on three and two. It's amazing and a young hitter and certainly a great hitter like Sanchez will learn that the three two count doesn't mean it's an aggressive or neutral count. It actually is an advantage to the pitcher if the hitter keeps showing you that he's ability to expand the zone at three two you don't have to throw him a strike. Cody Allen up in the Indians bullpen Terry Francona couldn't ask for anything more out of Brian Shaw who was terrific tonight. Another Indians pitching change and we'll be right back.
tomorrow it's a winner take all game five in the NLDS between the Cubs and Nationals on TBS. Then Friday, Jose Altuve and the Astros will be waiting in the wings to take on the winner of tonight's matchup in game one of the ALCS. Coverage begins Friday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on FS1. Bullpens have been magnificent tonight. Each unscored upon, and as you can see in this series, the Indians bullpen has had a lot more work to do. All in. Yeah, it's, and I didn't think that was going to be the case for the series, but it has been because of the dimension. It's Cody Allen here with two out, and the bases empty in the eighth. Terry Francona wants him for Greg Bird, the home run threat. Bird has faced Allen a couple of times, including once in this LDS, and struck out. <laughs> Two and one. Everything that the Indians may have prepared for tonight went out the door after another short start by the perhaps Cy Young Award winner this year. Terry Francona and Mickey Calloway had to kind of manage it on the fly. Certainly not unprepared for any situation. It just wasn't what they expected tonight. And the bullpen has really been great. Miller scoreless. Shaw scoreless. And now Allen in a two strike count to Bird. He let one slip away. It's three and two. Well, come postseason time, Allen's been great. No ERA so far in his young postseason career. He's nasty. He's hoping to stay that way for at least an inning and a third. Seven for seven in postseason save opportunities. Strikes out Greg Bird. A couple of Indians relievers combined on a scoreless eighth to the bottom of the inning. Still three to two Yankees.
Enter Aroldis Chapman, who has been as good as ever over his last 14 appearances. As you can see, has not allowed a run. And here in the eighth, he will begin the process of trying to get the final six outs. Giovanni Urshela leads off against him. It'll be Urshela, Lindor, and Kipnis. Since September 1st, when that stretch began, 26 strikeouts, three walks, and this from a guy who faltered outside the All-Star break and had temporarily lost his closer's job. Well, they fixed that. The way he throws the baseball now behind it. Urshela behind 0-2. The few bumps that Aroldis Chapman has encountered in his postseason career have come on the road. His career road postseason ERA over six. At home, he has not allowed a run. And there have been a couple of homes in his postseason career. Well, in fairness, Last year he was pushed to the tilt. I mean he came in in game six way early and had to be removed in the ninth once the Cubs were able to score a bunch more. And then of course came in in game seven in the eighth inning with two outs, a double, a two run homer, and then an impressive ninth inning that he pitched to give his team a chance to ultimately win the World Series. Strikes out Urshela for the second time in this series. Well, that game seven appearance that you speak of last October, and Rajay Davis hit one of the most improbable home runs in recent postseason history. Folks around here call that the most electrifying moment in the history of this ballpark. That would go to extra innings, as we know, where the Cubs would survive. And break their World Series curse. Francisco Lindor, one for seven with three career strikeouts against Chapman, hitless in two tries against him in this series. And understandably late. And it's a good thing there's a protective railing down there in the visiting dugout because that was getting in there hot. Jason Kipp is waiting on deck. He's the Indian, the one Indian perhaps that has had anything close to career success against Chapman. In fact, he's got a couple of base hits against him in this series. For Chapman, the last appearance came to save the game three efforts after the home run by Greg Bird. The Masahira Tanaka pitching heroics. Chapman went an inning in two thirds that night at home. And there was a discussion on the mound between the two that I can't think of anything but a fastball right here. He has not come close to timing his fastball. And he decided to yank a, yank a breaking ball instead. Was that his slider? It's hard to tell when it goes 50 feet. <laughs> Yeah, now he's had some battles with Lindor after some foul pitches. Lindor struck out on a changeup and he did strike out on a slider. But that was after seeing about six, seven, eight pitches in the at bat. Those first two fastballs, he didn't come close to timing. Two and two. So what they did with Chapman. When you get on the side of the baseball, and even though it's 98 99, it doesn't have the carry that his four seamer does when you get behind it. And now they corrected that, and he has been, as you showed, the numbers so much better when you stay behind the baseball at 101 with the carry of a four seam fastball that just explodes at the plate. The 
Lindor with a bouncer up the line. Frazier gets to it and throws him out on a tough chance. I'll tell you what, he got away with that pitch. Wow. Two gone in the last of the eighth inning. The New York Yankees four outs away from coming back from an 0 2 series deficit to advance to the American League Championship Series. Didi Gregorius with a pair of home runs. Corey Kluber, a second short start in this series. And again, that was a much better swing on a breaking ball that's an average fastball velocity of 91. And Frazier was Johnny on the spot, but the door squared it. Oh, no. So here's Kipnis now over three tonight. And again, three for six in his career against Chapman, including two base hits in this series. Late one and one. You know, we can talk about 102 mile an hour velocity. You can see the readings on your screen. It's a blip when you're 60 feet 6 inches away. Took something off that time and gets a cold strike. It's one and two. This is more like the slider that he's been working on. Two strikes to Kipnis. And this one goes to the ninth. A one, two, three, eight by a roll to Chapman to the top of inning number nine. The Yankees still on top by a run.
Well, the Indians bullpen has matched the Yankee bullpen. They have been splendid tonight. All the damage done against the two starters, and as good as CC Sabathia was, he yielded the only two runs of the night scored by the Indians. All three from New York came on a pair of Didi Gregorius home runs against Corey Kluber. There have been opportunities against the bullpens. Nothing is cracked through. Starlin Castro leads things off against Cody Allen in the ninth. Castro followed by Hicks and Headley. Castro singled back in the sixth. That came against Andrew Miller, who threw two scoreless innings in relief. Brian Shaw, two scoreless innings in relief. Allen came on to get the final out in the eighth. When the Indians bat in the bottom of the ninth, they'll have the heart of their order Ramirez and Carnacion and Santana. And there'll be a lot of interesting discussions after this game's over, whoever wins. And people, I'm sure, are going to talk about did the Indians do too much in their winning streak. This is a byproduct of what made the Indians special. The last three games, their starters were not able. Castro goes around as Perez finishes with the throw to first. And that's the 30th strikeout of the night. And the, the starters is the point I was going to make. We're not able to do what made them so special in September. So a lot still to be determined here in the bottom half as in the top. But this series played out the way I thought it was going to play out. It was going to be tight. And it has lived up to that as far as game five. Here's Aaron Hicks now with one gun. The 30 strikeouts, by the way, is a postseason high this year. This was a series, as we talked about, that was averaging 24 strikeouts a game. And that number will go up. Most combined strikeouts in a postseason series. Two to count to Aaron Hicks. I'll tell you another thing that folks will be talking about, and the Indians still have three outs left to try to make this go away. Their collective shortcomings in winner take all postseason games. Hicks into the opposite field. Jackson comes out for a plate on a couple of hops. It gets away from him. And that gives Hicks an extra base. That ball had so much English on it, it just checked away from Austin Jackson. And a very important insurance run is now in scoring position. Well, Jackson was playing really deep and with two strikes, didn't adjust the depth. And as he comes in, to your point, when this ball hits right about there, see the turn it makes. He just didn't get the glove down and right through the wickets. A big moment for the Yankees to get a little breathing room. But I was really surprised the depth and how deep he was playing with two strikes. In left field. So now an opportunity for Chase Headley with a runner in scoring position and one gun. Struck out as a pinch hitter in the sixth. Oh. A 273 batting average during the regular season, his highest since 2012 when he led the National League with 115 RBIs. In a big RBI spot here. A bomb and a strike. He 
you know, back to that elimination game stat we were talking about. The Indians have lost six of seven winner take all postseason games in franchise history. The lone exception was against these Yankees in the 97 ALDS. Good fastball again. The theme has been tie him up inside. Tie him up with fastballs, bounce in the back foot, breaking balls. That one probably caught a little more of the plate, but the velocity and movement. The one two. Headley fights it off and dumps a little pop for the second baseman Ramirez who easily gathers it in for the second out. Again as we mentioned both teams have had opportunities grip the moment sponsored by Falcon Tires the official tire of Major League Baseball the Indians had scored two in the fifth. They forced the move to the bullpen and then David Robertson got this double play ball off the bat of Francisco Lindor that quickly snuffed out the rally. So now it's Todd Frazier. Oh no! And on the field, no swing by Frazier, a ball with no strikes. No strikes. <laughs> Terry Francona was the first manager to come back from a 3 0 championship series deficit. Did that in 04 against the Yankees. Came back from a 3 1 deficit in 2007. Should the Indians not come back here, he'll be the first manager to lose three straight clinch games in consecutive seasons. Yeah, hard to explain. Last year, more explainable because he had one and a half starters. Yeah. This year, up 2 0 with his staff, and Carrasco pitching a pretty good game in at a fifth. Bauer didn't get out of the third. He didn't get clued. Two balls and a strike to count to Todd Frazier. Well, there's nothing wrong with the plan. The two time American League manager of the year had the Indians ready to roll. I'll tell you, there's something about the 100 win curse. In the wild card era, there have been 23 teams that have won 100 games in a season. Only three of those teams. Have gone on to win the World Series. Two of them were the Yankees. So only three occasions, two teams, where a 100 win club has claimed a series championship. A strike to Frazier to fill it up at three and two. Historic season for the 2017 Indians. Hoping that this isn't the night their season ends is a sold out crowd. Great job there, doubling up on 3 2. Frazier leans out over the plate. He made him stand up with that 3 1 fastball, fouled off on the 3 2 fastball. Now, if he wants, he can go back to the breaking ball. On the outer part of the plate. 
because it made him aware that back to back times he was willing to come in. Chapman locking in for the last of the night. Still three balls and two strikes to Todd Frazier. Postseason as a wild card team. In four of the five occasions that they've come here via the wild card. Frazier giving Allen a real battle here on three and two. Customer and Gardner. As the series has gone on, his at bats have gotten better and better, tracking pitches a little bit better. So Mickey Calloway comes out for a quick refresher on the Gardner assignment. Gardner tonight's two for four to John's point. Coming off a regular season in which he hit a career high 21 home runs. Got Tyler Olson up in the bullpen. How many times will a pitching coach come out with first and second if I think the conversations like this saying hey remember if the count doesn't go in your favor. There's a guy on deck that's hit 50 some home runs that you might be able to pitch to. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> that guy struck out four times so you forget as a pitcher sometimes first and second still remains a base open. So you really do want to be careful and not give in just because you think runners are on. It's a lot easier to think that way when it's second and third. You go, oh, first base is open. This happens to be the third base is open. So here's Brett Gardner, and here we go with runners at first and second. Breaking balls in for a strike. These two have squared off twice in this series. Gardner one for two against Allen, two for nine in his career. And Joe Smith has joined Tyler Olson. That would be in case Aaron Judge bats here in the ninth. 19 home runs against right handed pitching. Tailed off really towards the end of the season. The power numbers, that is. One to Brett Gardner. As you watch Aaron Judge on deck, I mean, you know he is dying for the opportunity. It has been a frustrating series for him. Still, having said that, the Yankees are three outs away from advancing, despite Aaron Judge enduring three four strikeout games. It's never happened before in postseason history. See Gardner. Sometimes you got to guess along with the pitcher. And sometimes you got to tip your hat when he paints a fastball in the outside corner, which he did right there. Now you got to think breaking ball, maybe, if you're Gardner and fight off the fastball. Allen trying to strand a pair with two out in the ninth and keep it a one run game. I 
thing about fastball away what Gardner can do is flare it to left field he does such a good job at fighting that pitch off. Hicks reached on the single and then advanced on the error with two away Frazier walked a ball and two strikes to Brett Gardner. The right pitch. He just never got it out of his hand close enough where Gardner could even think about swinging at it. He spiked the curveball. That was the right pitch. Even then, Gardner made a motion towards. Two balls and two strikes. Brett Gardner, the longest tenured player on the Yankee roster, drafted back in 05, debuted in 08, won a World Series title in his second year with the Yanks. And I'll tell you, on the other side, Chapman's been sitting for a while. Usually, when you sit for a while, you think your team has scored and you can deal with that. They haven't scored yet. He's been sitting there ready to do his thing. He would just as soon have a three run homer here for all the wait time. The next two two. They appealed no swing and it'll go to a full count. Well, that's what the Yankees wanted now with two strikes, three two count. You can get the runners going, so for sure a single will score Hicks. Gardner, not one of the better Yankee two strike hitters, bats only 188 with two strikes, yet he's been able to battle here and work to a full count. Aaron Judge next. As John mentions, both Hicks and Frazier will have a head start with two away. There go the runners. Here's the three two. Well, Kipnis playing really deep in center. Of course, we talked about Gardner's power, but Kipnis would probably feel better about coming in on a ball than going back. I would imagine that the depth he feels more comfortable, but very deep. Full count pitch. <laughs> Gardner is proving one tough customer as per usual. That's what he does, and that's what makes him so valuable at the top of the lineup. Early in the series, he struggled to get on base. You could see it coming along. You could see him recognizing more pitches, making it more difficult for the pitchers. I credit the Yankees here again. This is what they do. Has faced six batters. Four of them have seen five or more pitches. And yeah, we'll try it again on three balls and two strikes. Again, Hicks and Frazier will be running with two away. And I'm just telling you, the only downside here for the Yankees, the fact that A, they haven't scored, and B, Chapman's 22 minutes on the bench. Right in the dugout. So as great of, a, of an effort this is you would love to get that extra breathing room and show with Joe Girardi. Yeah in fact Chapman's actually gone up the tunnel just to start moving around a little bit he's not sitting anymore. He's very aware of what to speak of as well. Fred Gardner has done a great job. At working counts tonight. Remember, he he created the first out of the game when he tried to bunt off Cordy Kluber on the first pitch. He's seen 31 pitches in five plate appearances, despite making a one pitch out to start the night. He will not go away. No, he won't. And at some point, if Allen can trust, he can throw the breaking ball down and actually bounce it. Behind the plate, 
Gardner would have a hard time laying off him. He's in that attack mode of fighting off the fastball that he sees coming out of the hand. You just got to trust now that you can make that best breaking ball look like a strike and don't hang it. But bounce it. Saw so Roldis Chapman has reappeared in the Yankee dugout. He's on his feet. As are 38,000 plus tonight. Once again on a full count. See that pitch up there is easier for him to do exactly that. When you shorten up and you're not worried about driving the ball, it's actually easier to recognize that pitch in kind of a late attack swing, right? Late barrel to bat. So a 12 pitch at bat. And that'll make this tied for the longest plate appearance of the postseason. And two strikes. One hop past Ramirez into right. Hicks will score. And the ball gets away on the infield. Here comes Gardner. It's Frazier rather scores a second run of the play. And the Yankees get two. Singles in Hicks. And then a moment of hesitation in the infield allows Frazier to score a second run. Went with the fastball again, and Gardner did not miss the inside fastball. Bruce just throws it in, and the ball kind of takes a funny hop. He just gets it in quick. Instead of accurately. Two costly ninth inning errors lead to two big Yankee runs. We'll be right back. Two enormous ninth inning errors by the team that led the American League in fielding percentage during the regular season has given the Yankees a three run lead. Two runs crossing on Cody Allen's watch and that forces Terry Francona's hand for Joe Smith. And Aaron Judge will have a fifth plate appearance tonight after all.
you mentioned earlier, never before in a postseason series has a player endured three, four strikeout games. And it's one and one to Aaron Judge. That's off the plate. It's two and one. Two great at bats. First Frazier, draw on the walk, then Gardner. Frazier coming back behind in the count, and then Gardner on an epic at bat. The judge. Well, a slew of fastballs, and he went back to another one. He was trying to go away, and he threw it middle in, right in that short, compact swing for Gardner. And then he gets it in quick, not thinking that this is going to do much, and it just eats up Lindor and then heads up. You talk about a guy who loves baseball. Frazier heads up base runner. Still a full count to Aaron Judge. Never anticipate anything. At any point in the postseason, Frazier does not do that. Paying attention and hustle. The next three two. And Judge taps it to third. Rochelle has got to hurry. Throw to first is in time to get Judge. Two big ninth inning runs, however, have provided Aroldis Chapman with a little more cushion, trying to finish the comeback in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, Kevin, in that uh, that two-run rally, as a result of the 12 pitch at bat by Brett Gardner, tied for the longest of the postseason so far, it gives Aroldis Chapman a little bit more breathing room, a three-run lead, as we hit the bottom of the ninth. Over 30 minutes, Chapman waiting now to try to get the final three outs. 
Indians trying to find ways to get two runners on at least. Jose Ramirez leads things off in the Cleveland half of the night. Oh. As hard as it is for Ramirez, he's going to have to take a strike. You would think that just testing to see if Chapman still has the command and velocity after waiting. It's been just a two for 20 series for a guy who will finish with some MVP consideration this year. In front two balls and no strikes. The 2 0. <laughs> two balls and a strike now. Now you can go to hit and try to pick one out. <laughs> 97 or 98, one that you might like, or one that you think you can do something with. Three balls in the strike. I didn't like that pitch. Three run lead, 2 1 count. And here's a slider. No reason for that, really. Even if he hits a homer on a 2 1 fastball. This was an Indians team that had a commanding two games to none series, leaving this best of five. <laughs> Masahira Tanaka shuts him down in Yankee Stadium in game three. The Yankees get the Greg Bird home run. Luis Severino is brilliant in game four. Indians still felt good about their chances coming back home for a game five with Corey Kluber on the mound. Here's the three two. And there's ball four. Lead off hitter aboard. Get that walk to that slider. The Yankees also came to Cleveland with extra luggage saying if we're coming to Cleveland. Let's pack for Houston. So here's Encarnacion now. He has struck out twice and flying to center tonight. It's another reason the Indians were feeling good about themselves tonight. The return of their DH. The ankle injury had him on the shelf for games three and four in New York. Understand this having gone, not gone through it, maybe understanding why as a closer up, up until last year. Now Chapman has pitched multiple innings before now, but before that he hadn't. So you're conditioned to come in with adrenaline, shut the door, shake the hands, and do it again. Well, he came in in adrenaline in the eighth inning, and he shut the door in the eighth inning. The problem is he had to sit down for 30 plus minutes and try to emulate that same kind of intensity when you come back out. It's not always that easy. Ball on a strike. Just in case, Tommy Canley's up in the New York bullpen. In Chapman's last outing. When he went an inning and two thirds, 30 of the 34 pitches that he threw that night were 100 miles an hour or higher. In pitching a 1 2 3 eighth, only four of the 13 pitches he threw were of that velocity. That one at 100 and fouled back. Yeah, and I can tell you that the score does determine sometimes the extra adrenaline. And you know, with a three-run lead, trying to throw strikes, can throttle it down. But as he gets closer to that third out, I would think the velocity will get right back up. There. Ramirez at first to lead off the inning. A ball and two strikes to Encarnacion, and there's a cold strike three.
combined strikeout total keeps piling up as Encarnacion is locked up. Revved it up a little bit. So now Carlos Santana. A switch hitter batting right against the Southpaw Chapman. Chapman gets in front with an off speed pitch. Ramirez at first, 0 and 1 to Santana. Austin Jackson's the tying run on deck. And it's nothing in two, doubling up on that. I mean, when you know a guy's got 102 and you fall behind 0 and 2 with two off speed pitches. What's a hitter to think? Help. <laughs> Time out. Goes back to the fastball and Santana fouls it away. There have been 30 strikeouts in this game, most ever in a single postseason contest. That is a nine inning postseason contest. A chopper to second. Castro backs up on it to Gregorius for one. And the Yankees are now one out away from moving on for a date with the Astros. Astro did a nice job. That had a chance to take a tricky hop. She came in. That ball bounced up a little bit higher. See how he came in, and then he made the adjustments with his hand. Made a nice flip, and then Didi just knows. Okay, we got the one. Austin Jackson represents the last chance for the Indians tonight. Well, while the rest of the world may have given up on the Yankees for dead when they were down 0 2 and headed back home for game three, as Joe Girardi has told us throughout, they never gave up on themselves. And Chapman is an out away from delivering the Yankees back to the ALCS. That's why, as players, you can't listen to the noise in the day off that we had in travel, and I just happened to turn on the radio and listen. There wasn't one person. They gave this team a chance and they were crushing them. Oh, the, the natives were restless. The non challenge play here in game two, and then the grand slam, the five run lead that went away. Didi Gregorius tonight with some help from Brett Gardner late. And the Yankees are an out away. Ball and no strikes. The count to Austin Jackson. One to one. The Astros have already announced Dallas Keuchel as their game one starter. I think Sonny Gray might be the guy that Joe might go to if they're able to win this. Yeah, neither Joe Girardi nor Terry Francona was uh, willing to talk about a potential game one starter before the game tonight. That's uh, that's not a good look to put that kind of speculation out there in advance of an elimination game. Well, the drummer's not giving up. No, a very optimistic guy out there. Through some uh, some of the lean years here for this franchise as well. And now Jackson wants to think about it with time.
For the Yankees, a five year layoff between championship series is like an eternity. I mean, for most franchises, that would be recent history. But for the Yankees, with their pedigree, with their world championship track record, a five year layoff seems like a long time. But nobody could have predicted it would happen this year. Or this way, down 0 2. Exactly. The team that was supposed to be rebuilding with a younger core of players. And it's a ball and two strikes to Austin Jackson. The Indians are down to their final strike tonight. Well, CeCe literally left his mark on this field. <laughs> it's still there, yeah. And the Yankees hoping to leave for Houston. A ball and two strikes to Austin Jackson. An Indians team that finished with 102 wins during the regular season. Houston. An amazing comeback. A gritty team, a manager who had to face a lot of criticism, who stayed the course. He kept his team ready. And the veteran guys on the Yankees help preparing these young future stars. Boy, there's nobody talking about the challenge and the missed replay in game two now. The Yankees come back. They win games three and four at home based on great starting pitching. Masahira Tanaka and Luis Severino each go seven. CeCe Sabathia keeps that alive here. The winningest pitcher in the history of this ballpark. Claims a victory for a visiting club tonight, one that puts the Yankees back in the ALCS. Comeback. Didi Gregorius was one of the heroes tonight. A pair of home runs against Corey Kluber. Brett Gardner with a big ninth inning insurance RBI hit. Sabathia the win, Chapman the save, and the Yankees advance. People not going to admit they were wrong, but the Yankees don't care at this point. Another box of championship gear being broken out on the field. And the Yankees will have a date with an Astros team that they lost five of seven to during the regular season, but that's the last thing on their minds right now as they enjoy coming back in this series after being behind two games to none to win the ALDS. Let's send it down to the field and Tom Verducci. Thanks Matt. Well, Brett Gardner your ninth inning at bat 12 pitches typified this Yankees team. It would not go away. You won four elimination games. The first Yankee team to do it. Tell me how did this team play its best baseball in the toughest spots. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, it's a great team we're playing against over there. Maybe the best team in baseball all year long. And, um, you know, I tip, tip my cap to them. What a great opponent. You know, we went back home down 0-2, and 
We love playing at home. We love playing in front of our fans, and we felt real good about Masahiro Tanaka and Luis Severino going in games three and games no! four. So we were able to bring it back to Cleveland. Obviously, CC gave us a great start tonight. Didi with two big homers off the Cy Young winner early in the game, and uh, you know we just got a lead, and um, our bullpen pitched great. D. Rob came in, Chapman came in, and um, huge win. A lot of young talent on this team. You had three hits. CC Sabathia with nine strikeouts. David Robertson two and two thirds shutout innings. How about the old guard tonight? Well, I mean, we've got a we've got a lot of um, we can win a lot of different ways. We've got a lot of different guys that can contribute. And tonight, um, tonight it happened to be a couple other a couple of the old guys. But you know, like I said, Didi's the Didi's the one that set the tone. Corey Kluber is as tough as it gets. And um, you know, for us to go up, come out and get an early lead against him and give CC a little bit of room to work with, uh, it was really nice. Brett, thank you. We'll see you in the ALCS. Sounds good. Thank you. Back to you. Tom, thanks. ALCS game one all set for Friday in Houston. The Yankees celebrate a 5-2 victory tonight. Kevin Burkhardt in Los Angeles. Take it away.